morning and welcome to your Saturday, April 6, 2024 edition of the Evening News. I am Jemima Holmes. Thank you for joining us. Let's take a look at some of the lead stories tonight. CW reaffirms support for Guyana, rejects Venezuela's latest attempts to annex a equivalent. Edjo reveals five-point plan to address issues with trucks and roadways. Five homeless after a fire ravages North Rheinfeld House. The government announces plan to address language barriers in health sector and government looking to make OSH scholarships mainstream. Now for the news in detail. The Commonwealth Secretariat has expressed concerns over the recent actions by President Nicolas Maduro, who enacted laws to establish Guyana's Esuquibo region as a state within Venezuela. In a statement today, Secretary General Patricia Scotland reaffirmed her support for Guyana while also renewing the Commonwealth's position that the border controversy between the two countries should be settled at the International Court of Justice. More in this Vano Manikchand report. The Commonwealth Secretary General General Patricia Scotland said she received a letter from President Dr. Irfan Ali who has expressed concerns that Venezuela's next move would be to implement its plan for the seizure of Guyana's sovereign territory. The organic law promulgated by President Nicolas Maduro on Wednesday purports to exercise control over two-thirds of the sovereign territory of Guyana, the Esequibo. According to the Commonwealth SG, this legislation not only allows for the creation of a new state in Venezuela, but will also give the Venezuelan leader the power to elect a governor and the National Assembly of Venezuela will have legislative functions in this territory. The Secretariat reminded of the December 1, 2023 provisional measures issued by the International Court of Justice that bars Venezuela from taking any action to modify the border controversy pending the outcome of the case before the court. As such, the Commonwealth Secretary General said on Saturday, quote, Venezuela's latest actions appear to directly contravene the ICJ order and also the spirit of the 14 December 2023 Joint Declaration of Argyle for dialogue and peace between Guyana and Venezuela, where both states agreed to use international law and diplomatic means to address the controversy and to refrain from escalating the conflict. The Commonwealth affirms that the ICJ process is the appropriate and lawful means to address the matter under international law. End quote. Guyana moved to the World Court in 2018 to obtain a final and binding ruling on the validity of the 1899 arbitral award that set the land boundaries between the two countries. However, President Maduro declared that Venezuela does not and will never recognize the arbitral award and also reiterated the Spanish-speaking nation's non-recognition of the ICJ. Nevertheless, SG Scotland offered her continued support as well as that of the Commonwealth to help resolve this matter by peaceful means. She said, quote, I am encouraged by the form and consistent support from the entire Commonwealth family for the government and people of the Cooperative Republic of Guyana. I also call on member states to give whatever support they may feel appropriate to Guyana in this time of need. The Commonwealth Secretary General also urged the Venezuelan government and people to abide by the principles of international law and to manage the dispute in ways that guarantee the peace and stability of the Caribbean region. Reporting for the Evening News, Vanu Manikchand. Owners and operators of trucks and articulated vehicles today met with Minister of Public Works Juan Edgel at the Guyana National Stadium where he revealed a five-point plan to help reduce accidents and issues associated with trucks on the roadways. Michelle Henry tells us more. Approximately 100 truck drivers and operators turned out to the meeting on Saturday at the Guyana National Stadium, Providence on the east bank of Demerara. The meeting was intended to discuss ways in which trucks and other articulated vehicles can better function on the roadways without causing accidents or being a nuisance to other commuters. In this regard, Minister of Public Works Juan Edgel revealed a five-point plan. This plan points to the need for reduced speed and better noise nuisance management. 
It also addresses concerns regarding damage to public property. This morning, in preparation for this meeting, I wrote down all the things that, we, that I want to say to you where we're going. First, to the traffic chief and the traffic ranks. If you observe drivers working excessive hours, ground the trucks. If the police is out at 3 o'clock in the morning, and they still see a man 5 o'clock, same man driving the same truck up and down, they park. A tired driver is a danger to every citizen in this country. Damage to public property. The policy of the government is you'll pay. You knock down a lantern post, you pay. Drivers, operators, look out for our women. Don't make them nervous. Sometimes these women panic. Some of them call me minister. If you see what just happened, I barely escape. <laughs> and some of us, like we do these things to terrorize the women. Let me just say, the women of Guyana have every right to be on our roads just like you. Meanwhile, drivers also had the opportunity to raise concerns with the minister as well as officials from the police's traffic department. So as a truck driver that's driving truck and walking by trip, if I'm inside the sand pit and I can sit on three hour and four hour, that doesn't make any sense? I'm making less than you. I did. We will raise that to the minister. You need to have four stars. 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 Four what we need as driver, we need to take care of the others. Yeah. Look how we are paying for it. The, the $100 drop dropcare men and boss men, they come so brass stop in front of you. The line got a little piece more in the car. Where the car now? This truck coming with a full load of sand. I save a lot, Mr. Minister. I save a lot. Not for the officers here, no. I care for everyone. The need to stop, just stop so. This sudden stop gonna kill people. I am Michelle Henry, reporting for The Evening News. The Guyana government will be pursuing a new initiative to enhance health care delivery in the public health sector by targeting language barriers. As part of an arrangement with the Cuban government, cohorts of Guyanese medical students are sent for training in the Spanish-speaking island and nation, and in exchange, Cuban doctors come here for work. Last year, through this partnership, some 192 Cuban medical brigade workers came to Guyana and earlier this year, it was announced that Guyana plans to increase this number of workers to at least 500 this year, inclusive of doctors, nurses and technicians. With more Spanish-speaking professionals expected, President Ali plans to utilize the bilingual skills of Guyanese doctors trained in Cuba to effectively take full advantage of the medical capabilities of the brigade workers. Here's what he had to say. It's in the system we have a number of doctors who are trained in Cuba. So you have the added advantage of being good at Spanish. We want now to align your capability with the nurses and doctors who are Spanish speaking in the system. So that we will have, if you have a hospital with 10 Spanish speaking nurses, and we have two doctors who are trained in Cuba, we then develop a core group with those two doctors so that we have better communication channel and better support in terms of the capability that they bring, but ensuring that that capability is not hindered because of language gaps and language uh, challenges. A family of five is now homeless after a fire of unknown origin destroyed their North Rhineville Georgetown house last evening. Judy Lynch, her 29-year-old son, Andrew Marks, her husband, her daughter-in-law, and her grandfather are currently taking refuge at a relative's house. Following the blaze, they destroyed all their belongings. At the time of the fire, no one was in the house. The 29-year-old son said he was on the road when someone alerted him to the fire and that by the time he arrived home, his house was already fully 
engulfed in flames. It has only been one year since the family completed construction of their home after years of hard work. The family strongly believes the fire might be electrical in origin, but an official investigation by the Guyana Fire Service is underway. Coming up, huge workload ahead as commissioners of title sworn in for Esequibo Burbis and Shout 2.0 to ignite passion innovation on environmental advocacy. Do stay with us. More news ahead. When innovation and quality matters, Sylvie's Variety Store stand by their commitment to consumers in stocking the best construction equipment for the building sector. Seven horsepower diesel engine cement mixers, Honda and diesel engine compactors, Honda and gasoline engine power trowels, electrical and mechanical concrete vibrators capable of 13,000 vibrations per minute. So increase production faster with a perfect choice of construction equipment from Sylvie's Variety Store. Beaver Decor, stop the finest in the country Both ceramic and porcelain, tiles and chandeliers you'll see While you shop around stress-free, well drain stop at warming halls Make your shopping smooth and calm, providing you with quality To match your style is so unique, Beaver Decor Welcome back. You're watching the Evening News. The Judicial Service Commission has sworn in three female magistrates as commissioners of title to serve in the land court in Essequibo and Burbis. Luana McAllister reports that the new commissioners of title have a huge workload ahead, given that these critical posts they now occupy have been vacant for years. Here is more. The new commissioners of title are former magistrates Esther Sam, Renat Singh, and Krista Lambert. They took the oath of office before Prime Minister Mark Phillips at the office of the Prime Minister on Friday. These long-awaited appointments were made by the Judicial Service Commission after inviting applicants by public advertisements. The new commissioners of title will serve in the land court in Essequibo and Burbis. It is the first time for Essequibo that there will be a resident commissioner of title. After more than a decade, Burbis will be having a commissioner of title. And not just only one commission of title will be placed in Burbis, we'll be having two commissioners of title in Burbis. Chancellor of the Judiciary Justice Yonet Cummins Edwards during the simple swearing in ceremony. Given the length of a time these posts have been vacant, the Chancellor acknowledged that there is a huge backlog of cases. There is a huge uh, workload ahead and our three judicial officers will be tasked with lots of responsibilities and work in the land court. They have all assured us that they are ready, willing and able to carry out their roles and to take up the mantle as commissioners of title in Guyana. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister in brief remarks charged the new commissioners of title to execute their work with the highest degree of professionalism. We expect you to serve well the people of Guyana in your new office, while we collectively expect a high degree <clears throat> of fairness in your legal decision making, expediency is of equal importance as this seems to be the common concern expressed by our citizens having to wait too long for conclusion of legal matters in our administrative of justice system. I must remind you that fairness Objective interpretation of the laws of Guyana in your decision making is of paramount importance to we, the citizens of Guyana. Luanda McAllister for the Evening News. 
efforts are ongoing to make occupational safety and health programs mainstream at major institutions such as the University of Guyana as well as government programs like the Guyana Online Academy of Learning, GOAL or COSERA. This was disclosed by Labor Minister Joseph Hamilton, who contends that occupational safety and health is considered one of the top-ranking future professions. Luana McAllister joins us again with the details. Referencing an international labor organization assessment done on the 11 most important jobs for the future, Labor Minister Joseph Hamilton said OSH ranks the second most important. On this point, Minister Hamilton underscored the need for employee safety in workplaces as Guyana's economy expands, noting that the likelihood of mishaps occurring in different sectors is higher today than it would have been a few short years ago. When I came here, we only had 9%. Uh, since then, representation has been made. And so it is allowed enough for the complement of offices to be um, 32. Studies done suggest that we need OSH offices in the hundreds across public sector and private sector. Um, so I would want to say that we have to start at, at, at schools, uh, doing the type of um, education and making the information available. In this regard, the minister used the opportunity to urge young people to try and seek out opportunities to learn more about OSH in every sector and be a part of this growing profession. We still have hundreds of people who are going to university. Uh, they are pursuing professions that have, all, that have already died. Is dying and will die. They are not professions for the future. So we need to reorient and redirect people who is going to university uh, to get attention to what the labor force will need in five years and ten years. Uh, I would say one of the most important professions now in this uh, country, in all sectors, um, is occupation safety and health um, officers. April is being observed as Occupational Safety and Health Month and the Ministry of Labor is set to roll out several nationwide activities aimed at enhancing health and safety standards in workplaces. This year's theme, and I quote, we are running out of time, ensuring safety and healthy work now in a changing climate, end quote, will highlight occupational risks exaggerated by climate change such as heat stress, ultraviolet radiation, and air pollution. The holistic decision aims to educate employers and employees on how they can better protect themselves from heat-related illnesses. Luana McAllister, The Evening News. Recover Guyana and the Ministry of Education have teamed up to launch the second edition of SHOUT, an initiative that seeks to inspire environmental passion and innovation among grade 9 and 10 students in secondary schools across Guyana. Kamesi Slow tells us more. SHOUT aims to involve more young people in environmental action, encourage dialogue and initiate improvements in school environments. It is supported by ExxonMobil Guyana. During the launch event at Ramada Georgetown Princess Hotel in Providence, East Bank Demerara on Friday, Assistant Chief Education Officer for Secondary Sheldon Granville highlighted the significance of providing a platform for children to develop environmental awareness. We will see our students being able to think critically and not just think critically, but think critically on their feet. We'll see healthy competition. We'll see the students' ability to use rhetoric and to use rhetoric skillfully. We'll see demonstration of tone, the ability to connect with the audience. Meanwhile, Recover Guyana President and Project Lead, Dr. Dave Lautu, emphasized that the essence of SHOUT 2.0 is rooted in education and goes beyond the classroom. The essence of SHOUT is rooted in education. 
serving as a pivotal platform for enlightening and inspiring the younger generation about the importance of environmental conservation. This initiative brilliantly leverages the power of competitive speaking to engage students in a drive into environmental issues, equipping them with knowledge and the confidence to articulate their ideas and solutions. By doing so, SHOUT go beyond the tradition boundaries of classroom learning, providing dynamic and interactive forum that fosters critical thinking, research and public speaking skills among participants. The winner of last year's competition, Vasana Prasad, in brief remarks, shared her favorite moment from the previous competition, noting that it had left a profound impact ever since. Of course, I cannot give thanks without acknowledging Dr. Ramesh and Dr. Dave Lato for Cover Guyana for their never-ending support of my project. It brings me immense joy to report that the water refilling station has been operational for over three weeks now, hurtling in a new era of sustainability and consciousness within our school community. If you were asked me to pinpoint my favorite moment amidst this entire endeavor, it would undoubtedly be witnessing students day after day, morning or afternoon, filling their reusable bottles at the station. This simple act not only symbolizes a collective commitment to environmental stewardship, but ensures that our student body remains hydrated without resorting to the use of single-use plastic. I'm immensely proud to say that within the station's inaugural two weeks, we have collectively prevented 1,500 plastic water bottles from contributing to our planet's waste crisis. This remarkable feat underscores the profound impact that small, concentrated efforts can have affecting meaningful change. This year's competition, which commences on April 8th, will be rolled out in four parts and culminates on World Environment Day on June 5th with the live speech segment. The winners will receive three million Ghana dollars in cash and prizes, including a cash grant of 500,000 for the winning school to kickstart their environment enhancement project. I am Kamisi Solo for the Evening News. And now for a look at the bridge reports. The Demerara Harbor Bridge will be closed to vehicular traffic on Sunday, April 7, 2024 at 3 hours 30 for one and a half hours. Meanwhile, the Burberry Surfer Bridge is expected to be closed at 15 hours 30 on Sunday, April 7, 2024, also for one and a half hours. And now for a look at the local stock exchange market complements of Gassi. championships won change to GHE squad for remaining rounds and the usual suspects shine in GBA Easter tournament. Details of these stories coming up in the Sportcast sponsored by Macorp. Looking to bring your dream home to reality or simply taking on a home improvement project? Then National Hardware Limited is where you should start. Let us put that touch to your home. Choose from over 1000 Burger Paint Original Hues for any surface. We are known for our trusted brands such as Westinghouse, Philips, Satco, Rubbermaid, Pyrex, Gibson Home and so much more. National Hardware Limited, your do it best store. Located in downtown Georgetown and industrial site Rhineville.
Keisha. And I'm Michaela. Welcome to the first episode of Access ExxonMobil Guyana for 2024. And what a year it has been already for ExxonMobil Guyana. It really has. Are you ready to dive into the first episode? Because I am. I am for sure. So let's get the wheels moving on the first AEMG of 2024. Keisha, so tell me, how has the Big Red Bus tour been so far? Honestly, Michaela, it's been great. We went to several locations all over Guyana and we're still going.